Hello friends, this is David Sami, and I want to welcome you to our Tuesday night Bible study. Tonight we are in book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. I'm reading. It says, Then the Lord God formed a man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now I'm reading verse 15. The Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden. Now here we see that the Lord places his creature, man, in a beautiful garden. Over the years, I have had so many people tell me, David, why would God create a world like this? But maybe this was not the original plan. Maybe our world became this way as a result of our own action. But initially, God's idea for man was to be in a beautiful garden, a park-like setting where there were beautiful trees and food was freely given to us. But God gives man a task to till and keep the ground and take care of this garden and guard it and watch over it. And many people believe that um, God's original design was for mankind to gradually extend the garden until the whole world becomes like the Garden of Eden. A paradise. As a matter of fact, the word Eden means in Hebrew, it means pleasure, a beautiful or pleasant place. So we can see that God's original design for us to live in a beautiful, pleasure filled place. But also in that garden, there were two trees that represents two different way of life. We read, The tree of the life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now again, these two trees represent two different way of living. The tree of life represents a quality of life at its highest. Some people would even say it will represent the eternal life. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the word for knowledge is the word that means to observe and come to a conclusion. To come to a conclusion by seeing. It's almost as if you are going to look at the situation and you decide for yourself based on your observation what is good and what is bad. This tree really represented autonomy for mankind. That if we partake of this fruit, we are telling God in essence that we would not have you rule over us. We decide for ourselves what is good for us and what is bad. And as a matter of fact, in the following chapters, we're going to see Satan seducing Eve by this offer. That if you develop the ability to be able to look at the circumstances, look at the situation, and you can decide for yourself what is good or what is bad, then why do you need God? Why do you want somebody else to tell you what is good or bad? Be your own God. You can decide what is good or what is bad. But the question before us today is this. 
Can we live apart from God? What would our life look like apart from God? And maybe what would our society be like if we leave God behind? You see, we were not meant to live apart from God. We were made to bear His image, His likeness. And we were made for God to tell us what is good for us and what is bad. But what would be the result if we decide to push God out of the picture and rely on our own observation, on our own ability to decide for ourselves what is good and what is bad? And I kind of pondered on this question this past week. And what I'm about to share are some of my thoughts. But maybe you can add to what I'm saying that what would our personal life look like apart from God and what our society would become like apart from God and share your thoughts and your ideas and maybe you can add something to the conversation but our personal life when we push God aside and act as if there is no God I think the first thing that mankind goes after is pleasure Pleasure in a form of intimacy goes after what satisfies him, whether whatever appeals to us and whatever that we want out of life. And it is interesting that when we make our fulfillment of our desires, the goal of our life, we really arrive at two places. If we are not able to fulfill our desires, we would live a frustrated life because we feel like only if I can get this or only if I can do this then life becomes good and we are frustrated because we are not able to do that but if you have the opportunity to fulfill our desires and basically do as we please we gradually arrive at boredom we become bored with life now this may sound kind of like it doesn't make any sense and especially if you're a younger person you think how can that be how could I become bored with life if I get all my desires fulfilled because we were not made only to fulfill our desires we were meant to be part of our lives but never the goal of lives you know in countries that are affluent like ours and Putting food on the table is not so difficult. We gradually, gradually feel like that there has to be more than this. We become a little bit bored with life. And people who live in other countries where life is a struggle and putting food on a table is a struggle, they may look at us and think, how can you be bored with life? How can you not like the life you have? You have everything you need. And that's true. But the problem is a misplaced priority. Let me give you another example. Have you ever gone to a household that are very affluent and maybe the parents have given their son or daughter everything that he or she could want? But when you look at that child's face, you don't see a happy child. You see a child that is actually a little bit angry, it's demanding, and it's not even pleasant to his parents because that child has developed an entitled mentality. And the more you give to that child, the more he will feel like we need to continue giving. But those things in of themselves do not fulfill that child for a long period of time. Maybe it will bring a short lived happiness but it will never bring true fulfillment it's the same thing with us that when we make fulfilling our desires the goal of our lives we will not end up at fulfilled life and all we have to do is look at the affluent people in our society to really to a certain extent see that now 
The second thing that will happen to a person when we push God out of the picture and decide for ourselves what is good or bad is the motivation behind our action becomes solely on the basis of self-interest. I do ultimately what benefits me. And yeah, in the process, maybe I try to consider other people's thoughts and feelings, but at the end of the day, it is me. After all, I came, for, I came for nothing, I'm here because of no purpose, and I go to nothing. I want to look out for myself between these two points of birth and death and do as I please. Now, you may disagree with my actions, but after all, morals and, relative, morals and values are relative because there is no ultimate authority that we can go to to get decision on what is right or wrong. Morality becomes relative based on your family values, maybe your upbringing and what society promotes. But there are no absolutes. So at the end of the day, I'm able to justify and rationalize my action because there is no final authority that is telling us what we should do and what is right or wrong. I think it was Dostoevsky that said, without God, all things are permissible. Never underestimate what human beings are able to rationalize and do, giving the right opportunity. We are capable of doing things that we never thought we would do, giving the right circumstances. Because when there is no God, all things become permissible. But what about a society? When a society begins to wander away from God and leave God behind, what would that society will become? The first thing that will happen to that society is, is morality become the relative once again, because there is no final authority that would decide what is wrong or right. So morality becomes based on how we perceive, how we perceive things, based on circumstances, based on situation, based on our upbringing. But morality is not absolute. It will become relative. And wrong or right gradually would be decided but what the majority thinks in that society, not based on principle. Because as society changes and the views of majority change, the values of that society change. Because once again, the values are not based on fixed values, but they're based on relative values. So who decides what is right or wrong? primarily the majority. And we live our lives in that society based on our preferences, what appeals to us. But gradually, society would begin to become decayed and people's behavior become more and more lawless. Everybody begins to do what is right in their own eyes because there is no guidelines. We just do as we please. Eventually, until all forms of behavior gradually becomes permissible. Even behaviors that we intuitively know it's wrong, this is not right, but we cannot articulate why it is not right. Because we cannot appeal to God. We cannot say these behaviors are wrong because God says it or we shouldn't be doing this because it's not right based on what the Bible says. But once you get rid of God, how do you appeal to an action and basically make a judgment that an action is right or wrong? Again, we feel like gradually we lose a sense of right and wrong and things become permissible, even things that we know, again, intuitively these actions are not right 
And eventually people begin to look to their government for solution in that society because society is beginning to disintegrate. We begin to see actions and behaviors that we never thought we would do. But unfortunately, the government does not have answers either. The government's focus would primarily be on the events of this realm and world, but it would not have anything to say in regard to morality, values, and how we ought to live. Because the values of that society is really based on this world, based on our observation. And that's all we could offer, nothing more. Now, gradually that society would have two options. One would be that people would get accustomed to lawlessness. They begin to feel like this is just how life is. We just have to get used to lawlessness. And gradually we go toward anarchy. We gradually accept that this is our lot. This is how our society is. But the second option would be is that people eventually have enough of it. And they feel like this cannot be tolerated. But then they begin to look for leaders that would promise to come on the scene and fix this. We will gradually be willing to go more toward the police state where we relinquish some of our freedom and some of our liberty in exchange for safety, in exchange for some laws that would govern people's behavior. But you see, these two options would be our only options because we either check ourselves based on our morals or values or somebody from outside has to check us in order for a society to have some resemblance of law and order. These would be my thoughts on what life would be like if we push God aside. And I think in the Western cultures, we felt like we have arrived at a level of civility that we don't need God or religion anymore. We really, all we need is science and education. And with education and science, we gradually evolve to better and better kind of societies. But in reality, more and more people are becoming convinced otherwise that when we left God behind, we are going downward, not upward. Even though we are becoming more educated, we are not becoming better people. But in reality, we are becoming more degenerate, more we exhibit behaviors that maybe growing up we thought we would never see or it was not acceptable in the society at large. So I feel like Western world, we are going toward darkness. We are becoming gradually, like Europe, gradually is becoming a dark continent because we have rejected God and we are relying solely on our own observation and our own understanding and the conclusion that we draw are solely based on how we perceive things what god is saying does not come into the conversation we don't consult what god has to say about our lives and unfortunately this is what we are reaping ask yourself these questions are you happy with the direction that our country is going. Do you see the future to be a promising one? Not technology, but how we behave, how we act. Would our societies become a better places to live? Or no, it will become more lawless, more dangerous, unless somebody does something different or a strong leader come on the scene 
that promises to change things. But this is what I think will happen when we as individuals discount God and rely on ourselves to figure out what is best for us and also the society because we were not meant to function properly apart from God. We were made to be like Him and to be like Him we need to know what He says, how is God feels about issues of life, what are His commands, what does He tell us, and those commands are not restrictive, but they are protective, to protect us and protect our society from decaying. So just some thought on these verses, but for the next time, if you can, Please read chapter 2, verse 14 to the end of chapter, where we turn our attention a little bit toward the subject of marriage and its purpose. We're going to talk more about marriage after the story of the fall. But for now, we want to kind of turn our attention to marriage and see why God constituted marriage and begin to examine the thoughts and ideas that are here in the Bible. But until then, may the Lord be with you. May He watch over you. May He make His face to shine upon you and give you peace. And if the Lord wills, look forward to see you again next Tuesday night. Bye.